Assalamu alaikum. The entire business begins with the illusion of separability. Some unimaginable event took place, and what we consider the universe or universes have occurred from that point. That point signals separability, space. And with that comes what it inscribes within it, which is time. So the issue of every one of us is driven. Everyone is, makes effort, spends energy, hope, expectations, drive. Why? How many wants do you have? How many needs do you have? Where will it end? Can you make one comprehensive list now and don't revise it with what you want? Surely, as we move along with the ladder of consciousness from very basic life conscious to the will of the mind and its growth, as we grow along that path of wider, deeper awareness or consciousness, our needs seem to also increase. We end up in a world now that the choices that human beings have for every imaginable thing is so enormous that you need you know, an, an app to help you to navigate through that. It's impossible. How many choices you have? Now, it's going to increase because anything on a track will perpetuate that which is its engine. It won't stop. So what is it that at the end of the day you want? So you stop running faster and faster and more exhausted and even more desperate. Also, you must think seriously as to why you want it. Otherwise, you are completely navigating without a map, without an idea, without any principles, without any ethos. So why do you want this? Our wants are vast at every level of consciousness. At the human basic level, at the physical level, at the mental level, the idea level, emotion level. And then it leads you, supposing all your wants at these levels are satisfied. You're healthy. You're guaranteed to be well. You have enough to live on well. Your family loves you. Only three of the dogs you know, didn't like you. Or whatever, something like that. But you, know, you move on the physical level. More and more, and the mental and emotional. And then you reach a point, all right, now you have everything. You've been everywhere. You have seen it all. You have done it all. You have married enough, divorced enough, had children or didn't have children or created orphanages or you've done enough, enough. Now what? So you have had most of your wants or pleasures touched upon with also the always accompanying displeasure or pain. It's unavoidable. The two are ever together. Now you are in this zone of real, quiet, tranquil, you don't eat anymore, you don't want anymore, you, don't, you have no more emotional battles with your family, they've all left you. So now what? <laughs> Big victory. I mean, uh, so now, what is it? You wanted it. You wanted to be quiet. You wanted to be tranquil. You wanted to be at peace. You wanted to have your energies are all there without specific direction, definition, or purpose. What you call it is spiritually relaxed ambience of receptability, not too concerned about the past or the future. You are a bit in the now. People have to induce that state with a lot of help. It's our nature to be at a point of beyond pleasure. We yearn for that. We yearn for mindfulness or 
beyond thought or any other name you like to give it, transcendence. We yearn for that all the time. So this third question after what do you want and why is who wants it? Who is it? Who is the speaker? Who are you? I don't know you. You don't know yourself even. But you got used to be looking in that mirror often. So it's, it's me. The Baba is me this year. You know, that we're talking about 30 years ago. That also that time you said me. So who are you? Who is this you which is ever-changing, ever-unreliable, but yet within it lies a light or a spark or the idea of continuation? I'm the same. I was six years old. I'm 60, now I am angry, now I am content, now I am suspicious, now I am trusting. Now stop all that dizzying array of values. And it's impossible. Where does it end? So who are you? How is it you have cognition of these feelings and these events? And a very high level of correlation between other human beings also. They all think they've seen the same event in the same way, 90%. So that's a big thing. So who are you? Something constant, something perpetual, something that is the connector, is the glue, is the love affair of all of these diverse things. And something that's ever-changing in time and space, reflecting the time, the age, the culture of whatever is around. In other words, you and your day of living in that milieu at this time because of the global compressions, the whole world. So that you are in unison. You represent that era. You represent that culture, that time. Time matters. It's very important. Everything is based on the clock. Very few people have the luxury of responding to the seasons or to the day. It's a very cold, windy day. You don't get up. But the factory has to burn its fuel because of its allocation or whatever. So you have to rush there. And then, and then you have two, three days every week, whatever, just collapsing, just breathing. But of course, then the children pull you here and there because they discovered a new set of whatever, tennis racket. And you're a responsible parent. So you have no option other than going to the mall and, and being mollified. So who are you? 